Well, well, well. Here we are again. Game Theory FNAF Reaction Video. Been quite a while since I did one of these. For obvious reasons, if you guys have seen my previous ones. Apparently I gotta look at these things from seven billion different possible angles if I even want to comprehend what Matt is even talking about. So I don't even care about what people say. I'm just gonna watch this, state my opinions on it, my opinions on it, and we're gonna end the video. That's all I'm gonna say, let's hop into it. Now the reason why I wanted to check out this new one in, in particular is because as far as I'm aware, from the first like 10 seconds that I've seen, it's gonna talk about the Into the Pit book, which I actually have right here because I've been reading it. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't get too much into uh, into spoilers, but I'm, I'm sure it will. So I'm gonna say it right here, possible spoilers for Into the Pit. Hopefully there isn't some, because I'm still we reading it myself. I'm reading it. Hey guys, look, I can't pronounce my always. I'm still reading it. Man, I, I just love my community a lot. All right, let's watch. Reach you to the ball pit. Hey, that's no fair. I haven't got my Whose voice was that? <laughs> Is that Matt? <laughs> Made it. Ozzy? Ozzy? Oz? Ozzy? Ozzy! That's not Hello, good. Hello, Internet. Welcome, Welcome to, to Game Theory. And the start to what will undoubtedly be a very FNAFy new year because well, everyone else in the games industry has concentrated on new consoles with all of the teraflops and none of the actual games. Five Nights at Freddy's is over here in the corner doing its own thing and releasing, you know, exciting and interesting stuff. <laughs> last year's Help Wanted was a fantastic addition to the Fucking loved last year for FNAF. New and exciting lore all the so time. many good games. Inspired game coming out later this year. Oh the my AR God. game is something my boy Mark. We talk about at some point since apparently that also has lore implications. And most <sighs> it's been so long since I did a FNAF AR lore of a new book video. series, Fazbear Frights. Oh. The first one released after Christmas, and before the end of this year, there'll be a total of let me check my notes five. Holy mother of entered freaking five, five. five installments in a new book series <laughs> in a year. Ugh, it looks like Scott's gone back to his roots of just mass releasing stuff. Stuff. It's like you saw the Netflix model of binge watching a show and was like, I want that, but for video games and apparently <laughs> books. Jeez, if only mass drop lore reveals for us to binge understand, we'd all be happier for it. Anyway, the reason I call these books out is that first off, hey. they're just really good. You ever read the Goosebumps books? I no. Definitely did. Every I didn't, unfortunately. One. Night of the Living Dummy and Ghost Next Door every day, fam. Well, Fazbear Frights is just a modern That's, version of those. Uh, With each step closer. Three short horror stories. I know. Look at this. And Three stories the for the price of one. They aren't afraid to get super bleak. Today's oh boy. episode is going to go into detail for the first three. So if you want to read them blind, consider this your. Uh oh. Anyway, to keep I'm not done with it yet. One story ends Frick. Girl yeah, whatever. Severed body parts hidden away in plastic bags, only to then realize that she herself has been piece by piece replaced with a robotic body. In another, a <laughs> sounds kind of familiar. And forced to choose the way in which she is gonna die, with options ranging from boiling alive to electrocution to decapitation. She chooses eh. the decap attack. Dear fellow tubers, I know we were all super worried about Kappa coming in and striking us down, but when we're covered. Oh yeah, that was fun to deal with. We're pretty darn safe. But of course, I wouldn't be talking about all this on game theory if it wasn't for the lore. These lower, aren't lower, just lower. random horror stories. Each one is connected back to characters and locations. I was about to say the one where they find like the body parts and being like cut off. That sounded like Candy Cadet Story from Pizza Sim. Game. Let's continue. The girl who makes a wish to be beautiful and then is unknowingly hacked to pieces. Well, the fairy godmother. Hey, is that baby? Is a red pigtailed clown robot with green eyes. Huh? So does that description sound familiar to anyone? Sounds Probably like baby. Who opts for decapitation? Well, I mentioned that she's imprisoned. What I left out was that she's actually trapped in the stomach of a white and pink bear with a twisted hmm, sense of. That sounds like fun time pretty. Blood. And if all that's too subtle for you, well, the first story out. I keep seeing these pictures like on the reddit and i don't know where they're coming from some people are saying that they're in the book but i i see no choices of these pictures in the book i'm i'm lost bunny suit taking us to see six murdered kids in the back of a freddy's pizzeria in the year do you guys know where these pictures are from pretty darn direct but 
more on that later. 1985. These matter because they're giving us more information about how the FNAF universe operates. Sometimes in very direct ways, like giving us the exact number of murder victims and the dates of their death. And mm. sometimes in more indirect ways, by showing us that this is a canon where a girl can be rebuilt day by day, piece by piece as a human robot hybrid so that realistic that no one, not even herself, realizes it. And so oh, that is what we're no. covering today. What these stories show us about the FNAF universe. What they confirm and also what important new details they unlock. Plus, they open up a big theory about the games. One that oh, I actually boy. got wrong late last year and I'm very excited about now. So with all that said, mm. reader beware, you're in for a scare. Uh oh, stinky. So I'm guessing from what you guys have told me, not many FNAF fans actually read the books. I have another book right here. Not many people actually read these, so I'm guessing that's why this video is 20 minutes, because Matt better do a damn good explanation of them. Alright. What's going on? And for those of you who've dismissed the stories as non-canon, I wouldn't be too quick to judge these books. Each one of them Separate has this universe. In official description. Quote, in this volume, horror master Scott Cawthon spins three sinister novella-length stories from different corners hey. of his series' canon. Oh, look at that, it's right there. Different corners of the canon, you say? Sounds oh, to me like really? some stories are going to be more aligned with the trilogy of books. Damn, I really want that. More so with the canon of games, but still, all of them existing within the canon itself. So absolutely absolutely worth our time to investigate. The first story actually has a lot to cover, so I'm going to just Into save that one for last and instead start oh. with the second, To Be Beautiful. In it, Sarah, a 14-year-old girl, rescues a red pigtailed clown animatronic from the trunk of a car that she finds in the scrapyard. Grateful to be saved, the robot, who calls herself Eleanor, but is nice probably neck. described as giraffe oh baby based on the cut illustrations from the book, says that she'll grant any wish. Sarah wishes to be beautiful, and baby, like a twisted fairy, Fairy Godmother makes it happen by putting Sarah to sleep every night and hacking off sections of her body while she's unconscious. How is that them with being beautiful? Junk. Quote, Sarah looked at the floor. One bag contained a human leg. Another oh my human God. blood pooled in the bottoms of the bags, but the limbs had been severed neatly, as if in a surgical amputation. Another bag stuffed with bloody snake-like entrails and what appeared to be a liver slid from the cabinet shelf. What and the frick, Scott? <laughs> Hey, if pizzerias never work out for you, baby, Beverly Hills plastic surgeon is a, a really small face. <laughs> the only stipulation is that Sarah must wear a special necklace to keep the illusion alive. When the necklace inevitably falls off, Sarah's new junk body is exposed hmm. and falls Kind of sounds she like the sound disc. by her own severed body parts as she's forced to watch baby walk out into the world having stolen her old look and identity. Quote again. I made your wish come true, Sarah. And in return, Eleanor laughed again. She jerked and shook, her silver finish turning the pinkish shade of Caucasian skin. In a matter of moments, she was a dead ringer for Sarah. Well, you certainly made my wishes come true. Great story to read to the kids at night, by the way. Good night, sleep tight, don't let the shape-shifting robot slice off your face and steal it! Anyway, as I mentioned before, Sarah's extreme makeover Shoot. confirms that in the FNAF canon, humans can be partly or fully robotic without ever knowing it. We've seen it before in the original trilogy of books, where Yay, George Charlie. Fawcett revealed that protagonist Charlie was a highly advanced robot, and we're seeing it again happen here. A normal human Sarah unknowingly being remade into a robot. The fact oh, that this geez. is now a recurring element of the series goes to support the idea that hmm. Michael, the crying child of FNAF 4, after getting bitten, could I will put you back together in a much more literal way than any of us were expecting all those years ago. He was put together as a machine. He grew up without knowing it and was only wasn't that in um all out once he Matt's timeline theory? Being scooped at the end of I don't know. It was in one of his previous ones. I should be dead, but I'm not. Does this little short story outright confirm any of it? No, certainly not. But third time is a charm. Add, 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 add. The third story about a girl named Millie trapped inside Funtime Freddy's stomach doesn't really tell us a whole lot. But instead, it just confirms what we are already suspected. Jabbing bonbon. Designed to be large enough to capture kids and either kill them off or transport them to underground testing facilities. Moving on to the end of the book, there's a little teaser, like a Marvel movie, but with 100% less Nick Fury, where we get a preview of a seemingly new monster. Two cops are discussing a hooded figure raiding the neighborhood's dumpsters. They call it the Stitch Raid. Quote, the Stitch Raid, uh, who? witnesses said, was a shrouded figure in some sort of cloak. The detective squinted at a picture that showed the figure pulling what seemed to be a mannequin's torso from the dumpster. 
the face wasn't a face. Not a human face, anyway. It looked more like a mask. The face was round, and its features were drawn onto the curved white surface. It had dark eyes, one of which looked blackened, were those blood stains around the mouth. End quote. To me, the Stitch Wraith is just a cooler name for Ennard. I mean, you got yourself a creature the that has a Stitch white Wraith. mask with a oh, that's fucking dope. Eye, sharp, potentially bloody teeth, and a lurching walk. Definitely similar to the way that he's shown in the games. Ennard's obsession with trash would also be appropriate <laughs> for the Stitch Wraith. The trash pile. It's just a mass of wires. It needs something like a mannequin torso to give it form. We actually see the same thing with Scrap Baby's design from FNAF 6. Between mm. games, she clearly assimilated any and all garbage into her form to be more passable and human. To me, I gotta be honest, I just think this Stitch Raid story is cool because it shows the outside world's reaction to the Freddy creatures. That, that is really interesting. Show what happened to him after the events of the game. It connects the dots for the story after the credits finished rolling. To know that Ennard, after he escapes from Sister Location, to the in-universe people going about their daily lives is just an <laughs> urban legend named the Stitch Raid. I guess oh. that's just pretty interesting to me. I think it's fun. Anyway, it's also worth noting here that the teaser... I want more info on that. The Stitch Raid. Quote, five, five withered bodies with eyes that bled black down the sides of the face, end quote. So it appears that Ennard, after leaving Michael's body, tried to skin suit five or so other people. Notice that it says withered bodies. These are bodies that have clearly decayed. Just like the the like withereds, you situation. say? And the mode of death, them crying black. It's just the body leaking oil as Ennard needs to go and find another skin suit to possess. So that's pretty much everything else. But what I hmm. really want to focus on now and in the follow-up mini theory is the first story of this bunch. This the story not a where the book gets its name, Into the Pit. In it, a video game loving, anime obsessed ten year old boy named Yay. Oswald is forced to spend most of his summer in an old rundown restaurant named Jeff's Pizza. Her name's One day, Jeff. to pull a prank on his father, he finds himself in a wait for this time traveling ball. Oh yeah. Man, I remember reading the preview of this the for the first time. Six murders have just happened at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. Quote, when the smell of pizza hit Oswald's nose, he understood. He was still in Jeff's Pizza, or more accurately, what Jeff's Pizza had been before Jeff took over. The ball pit was new and not roped off. On the wall was a mural of the same characters performing on stage. The brown bear, the blue rabbit, and the bird girl. Below their faces were the words, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. He even caught sight of a calendar hanging in an open office that helped him pinpoint the date, 1985. End quote. Way to take the mystery out of it there, guys. I was all ready to cross-reference all the arcade cabinets that you saw in the pizzeria and the allusions to the Smurfs and other popular media. <laughs> the Smurfs. The date, but you just had to go and take that all away from me. So... Thanks for saving me the research, I guess. But no thanks for taking away my deserving YouTube watch minutes. And here's... Oh, yeah. Uh, guys, look. Matt's watch minutes. So, the Missing Kids incident, that took place on, what, June 16th? June 6th? Around that date, so June 6, 1985 is the exact date. Big mind blow this That's time. interesting. First, because I think there are actually two in this one story. In this oh. one, we get ourselves clear, indisputable evidence that in 1985, six kids were killed. Quote, the rabbit stopped in front of a door with <laughs> a sign reading <laughs> party room. Half a dozen kids, none of them older than Oswald, their lifeless bodies propped into sitting positions, their legs stretched out in front of them. They were all wearing Freddy Fazbear birthday party hats. Oswald couldn't tell how they died, but he knew the rabbit was responsible for it. That the rabbit had wanted him to see his handiwork. End quote. On one hand, it's incredible to finally get ourselves a date and a firm number of dead children. Yay! Get ready to change your Facebook status because it is complicated. Ugh. You see, 1983. It's FNAF, it always is. Never once been an important date in the series. 1983? Absolutely, that's FNAF 4. 1987? You betcha, that's FNAF 2. We've got ourselves 80s representation everywhere. Mullets and Oingo Boingo for days, but never, not once, has there ever been a mention of. 1985. Until now. It might be easy to immediately write that off as a typo or some non-canon event. It's definitely not. Far from it. In fact, for as wacko as it seems, this time-traveling ball pit from a short story in a spin-off series of books takes Oswald back to a pizzeria that we've never seen before, but one that we have absolutely known to have existed since... Is this, alright, based on, oh wait, I, you guys can kind of see it up here. Based on the thumbnail, and based on what he's going off of right now, is this the restaurant that took place after Fred Bears, but before the FNAF 2 location, which had the unwithered, withered animatronics? We're just gonna have to find out. The second game in this series. 
as proof, let me pull up a clip from my second ever episode. Oh on boy, we're going way back. The guy was actually phone guy. Oh, those were the days. Every way to Sunday, this game is a. Oh my God! Look how much he's changed. In Five Nights Two, welcome you to this new location, implying that there was another Freddy Fazbear's. Look at how much game theory has changed. The Jeez. Guy makes reference to it on night one, mentioning the old location and how it was left to rot. So let me recap. There's the restaurant from the first. So game. sad. Because I, I can remember watching this. The one that you're currently working at in Damn. 1987 in Five Nights 2, an older location of Freddy Fazbear's... 1985. Oh. ...and the original Fredbear's Diner. In FNAF 2, we're presented with newspaper clippings that outright says that this location is having a grand reopening. But we knew, even way back then, five years ago, that the events of FNAF 1 took place oh after five. FNAF 2. It was a prequel sequel, so there had to have been a Freddy Fazbear's <laughs> pizza that existed prior to FNAF 2. Two that got the franchise shut down in the first place. We also know that it wasn't Fred Bear's Family Diner because Phone Guy calls that restaurant out separately. Hello and welcome to your new. Oh my God, this is so fucking nostalgic. Uh, we're gonna try to contact the original restaurant owner. Uh, I think the name of the place was. Fred Bear's Family Diner or something like that. So in this one random little scene from Fazbear Frights, we uncover a pivotal piece of the timeline that's been missing for the last five years. Oh so my freak, that, that feels good. the very beginning of this franchise, a pizzeria that looks to be home to the first six <laughs> actual murders of the Fazbear story. In fact, I can actually do you one better. I believe this to be the six dead kids that we end up reuniting in the Happiest Day minigame from FNAF. Add, add, add. Reuniting in the Happiest Day minigame from FNAF 3. Notice that detail about all of them wearing party hats. These were kids party hats, you say. The same party. And the Happiest Day minigame from FNAF 3 has us reunited well, to finally finish the I wouldn't quite party say party hats, but and gruesomely I guess that connects this it. Is huge information here, guys. However, true to form, as it always is with this story, not every Everything lines up. With this being fun, logically the earliest set of murders that we see at a pizzeria set before 1987, then we should be seeing the animatronics get possessed here. It's something that we've never actually seen in the games. This should be the missing children's incident, where the victims' bodies are shoved into the suits, never to be found. But it's clearly not. The book makes it very obvious that these bodies were clearly out and visible. Quote again: There were noises, but not the usual oh. noises of Freddy Fazbear's screams. Crying children, yells for help, chaos. Oswald's stomach in knots, he moved through the crowd, past crying mothers running with their toddlers in their arms, past dads grasping children's hands and leading them swiftly towards the exit, their faces in shock. End quote. The bunny had laid out all his victims for everyone to see. A far Jesus. cry from the bodies being shoved into the suits and then not being discovered for years on end. Hence, the missing children's incident. And we know that the missing children's incident is most likely where the animatronics So got when I said it was like June 6, 1985, that's not right. The souls fused together to create living animatronics. Roll into FNAF 2, 1987. Oh my gosh, look, there's living animatronics roaming around this pizzeria. Oh, and we installed security devices just because we know a murderer came around the last time. Ah, there's a reason I stopped talking about the timeline of of these things. Additionally, there are six. <laughs> Did you though? <laughs> and the missing children's incident only had itself five. Stop that talking about the timeline, huh? Way, right. Since FNAF 6, six children has always been the magic number. It's weird to mention a magic number when you're talking about murdered children, but you know what? This series desensitizes you. The a magic lot. number. Our list is Susie, Fritz, Gabriel, Jeremy, Cassidy, and Charlotte. The core four animatronics: Golden Freddy and the puppet. Six. The, the problem is it. Charlotte, the puppet, always seems to have a separate death outside of the building. Yeah. What the hell? The realm of the other five children so having her suddenly lined up with all the rest of the kids at the same time just doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense i don't know maybe i just need to think on it more because everything else lines up we have ourselves a golden bunny leading kids down a hallway into a back room just like those original the thing is like that's recent high. he's also that's very clear FNAF visible, 6 which means he'd likely be taken into custody again just like those original newspaper clippings describe as it always is with the series so many <laughs> line up that there's just one or two little details little sticking points that make the pieces fit a little awkwardly. I honestly think, though, that this isn't the last time that we're going to be seeing this pizzeria. Remember earlier when I mentioned Joe. that new FNAF game that's coming out in 2020? Yes. A little bit later this year, probably titled Into Madness. Well, that one is set in a mall with a very 80s theme. Again, we've been talking about the Rockstar animatronics for a couple episodes now, and that's the one where well, they revealed. It wouldn't be surprising for me to see that game be the one where we finally I don't know about those being the Rockstars. Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, and witness all the events that Oswald just saw for ourselves.
So there you have it, my friends. The first major and a couple of minor reviews. I don't know if. Oh, see, th this is the thing, right? This is my opinion coming in. So everyone, cal calm down. Um, I don't think this is going to be the location Matt's talking about because, 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 because it has Vanny in it, and Vanny does not go back that far. Right? She doesn't go back that far. This this is doing like FNAF VR um, time placement. This this is going to be after FNAF VR because as we've seen in one of the teasers, Vanny is in it. Also, these are very clearly not the Rockstar animatronics, Matt. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, that is that is my opinion. Also, uh, yeah, don't no one get mad. That's my opinion. Step foot inside the first ever Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria and witness all the events that mm. Oswald just saw for ourselves. So there you have it, mm. my friends. The first major and a couple of minor reviews. The rest is interesting, though. Installment had in store for us. However, there is one final mystery that this story might help us solve. Oh boy, solve. if you Not put it in a port too. A new set of murders to think about crimes that are now chronologically the earliest that we see in the timeline, but also into the pit may just be giving us the identity of the person behind all of this. I Let's try. Child murders. I mean the mystery of the man behind the game. What do I mean oh. by that? And what evidence do I have to prove it? Well, that, my friends, is a theory. I freaking knew it! God damn it! So in the meantime, subscribe. Notice though, no, notice though, guys, right? I I've caught you all. Ow! I hit my desk with my knee. I've caught you all. You all got mad at me in a previous reaction video. It's like, oh yeah, uh, Scott's not the creator of the of the games. Well, well, well. Notice how at the beginning of this video, Matt said that he made a stake. He made a mistake in one of his previous theories. What do I mean? And now he knows that someone else is behind it, and it's not Scott, so I, I've got you now. So, that was Matt's newest FNAF theory. I like this one. I do like it. Again, I don't fully agree with the fact that the 2020 release will be the uh, location between Fred Bears and the FNAF 2 location. That is, that is an entirely separate location, because in one of the teasers, we see that Vanny is like up on the rooftop or something, and Vanny doesn't come out. We don't know. We know. We don't know of Vanny until FNAF VR, which is like one of the very last things in the timeline. So I really, really don't agree with that. But everything else, that's pretty good. Now, now that Matt has talked a little bit about Into the Pit, it really makes me want to read this even faster than I have been. Um, because I am not even finished with Into the Pit, uh, the first chapter, so I need to really get going on that. But that is it for this reaction video. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Hopefully I did better at reacting this time. Guess I'm gonna find out from you guys in the comments, so I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.